Listen, we're going full on Draco today, okay? Hello there. So today, as you can see, my hair does not want to cooperate whatsoever. And I'm actually about to dye it, so I don't feel like washing it or styling it. I'm sorry, I'm just too lazy. <laughs> We're here today to talk about the five faves of October, of course. Again, how is it already like November? Anyway, we're here to give you some tea on the new products that I've been loving in the autumn. And I gotta start off with the hair one, okay? We have to. So if you follow me on my Instagram or if you noticed, in some of my past videos. I had like this beautiful, vibrant, almost like neon red orange color. I loved it, I still do. This is like the leftover of it. Still pretty cute. It really washed out into like this beautiful rose gold shade. I'm impressed. And it was the mixture of these two. These are the Sophie Hanna hair, the semi-permanent hair colors. I have two shades. I have wild orange and strawberry twist. Listen, the mixture of those two was epic. I think I did like five parts of the orange and one part of the red and beautiful. Like the result was just so stunning. And now I'm kind of tempted to just take the red and just do red hair for the first time in my life. But these hair dyes are really, really nice. They come in this packaging with like a little nozzle. You just, you know, push it up, squeeze it out. Pretty good. I really like that they had like a little plug inside of them when they arrived. So there was like no chance they were gonna explode in the package, which is just a plus, the best. They do work on like various shades of blonde and I think like light brown can kind of work with these. But of course, you know, with these semi-permanent like coloring masks, you kind of need to have your hair at least somewhat more porous so the color can actually take in and look good. What I like about these formula wise, they feel really nice on the hair. Like when you have it on, for like, I don't know what, 30 minutes, your hair feels very good afterwards. That's very much appreciated because before I dye the hair, I usually wash it with like a clarifying shampoo or something that really strips the hair. And this just kind of compensates for that. So I love it. Another thing I love is that it does have the hydrolyzed quinoa protein. So I did this like with the Shrine hair drops. I did it with the Revolution hair drops. Every time I use like a conditioner with some of these drops, I genuinely like to use ones with protein because it's gonna sit on my hair for a long time and if it's too hydrating, my hair is gonna be so horribly overhydrated. So I'm very glad they kind of thought about that instead of me and put the protein in it. It's great. And it also, you know, strengthens the hair. It's good stuff. So it is perfumed, which is one thing. And the other thing you may want to be cautious about is the fact that it contains coconut oil. I don't have fine hair, but I do have like wavy hair. And coconut oil in general just was never good to my hair in any product. But I thought, you know what, it's like a mask, it's a dye. Like, I'm gonna look past that, I'm gonna try it out. I don't think it weights down my hair all too much, but I definitely think it doesn't really help. I know it's supposed to be like kind of nourishing, kind of like moisturizing, you know. But at the same time, I feel like, yeah, I could go without the coconut oil, honestly, because having something this heavy on your hair for a long amount of time is not very good. Plus, if you put it close to your scalp, which you may end up doing based on, you know, how your hair looks, it's not the best on the scalp. You know, because it is very comedogenic, not everyone may get away with doing that. So, you know, just beware if you have any troubles with coconut oil know it's in there and you know you know you do you i just thought i might mention this in case this is something that might bother you yeah so I'm, I'm not gonna be going into too much detail on how to use these because i will be probably doing like a whole full-on video dyeing my hair with these dyes so you'll just get all the details over there but i already used these and i must say i was very impressed with both the lasting of the color and also just the tone how true to the promised color it was I was just very, very impressed and very happy with the results. So I, first of all, I hope they're gonna come out with more colors. And I also hope that the second try I'm gonna do now is gonna be even better. The bottles are from Recycled Plastic and they are biodegradable, which I think is great. I love these kind of sustainability steps from smaller brands, especially that's like 
something to be really proud of. And I also must say that I love the campaign and all the pictures that I saw online. I feel like the results are quite accurate and they're not trying to like filter the hair or anything so it looks better or different than it looks in real life, which I really appreciate because buying hair dyes can sometimes be very misleading, especially these like semi-permanent dye masks because it looks so different on different hair, but I feel like their representation online is like truly what you want to look for. Like they really kind of nail down the different hair types. They do all kinds of like blends of the dyes on their Instagram and stuff like that. So like when they launched, I was kind of intrigued because I know Sophie Hanna, I've been following her for her hair for a while and I was very interested and I'm glad I finally purchased the dyes. Now let's move on to the like makeup -y realm again. First I have a brush. It's been a while. I actually hasn't. Eh, whatever. <laughs> we have a brush. So this is the For Your Beauty. The Rossman Drugstore is a holy grail place for me when it comes to brushes. They have so good affordable brushes. Some of my favorite eyeshadow brushes are like two dollars and they're from their range and this is gonna be no exception. This is the For Your Beauty Deluxe Foundation Brush. Can you see like a similarity to any very well-known brush you might know? Like, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe like this one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so basically it's a dupe for the Real Techniques 200, which is their expert face brush. This one, I feel like, is a little bit wider and maybe a little bit slimmer, but they're both pretty much the same. Like the density feels very similar, the application of them almost the same. And I love the Real Techniques one, I really do. But every time I can get like a similar brush, but a little bit different, I'm so intrigued. <laughs> so I had to get it. And I must say, I think this is gonna be like one of my favorite like to-go brushes, like traveling brushes, because I can use it for my foundation, for my concealer. I find a little bit different shape better for like cream bronzer. So, yeah, I mean, I already travel with the Real Techniques one everywhere I go. This one is slightly smaller and a little bit different in shape, and I feel like it might be even a little bit better for my traveling purposes. But I have to say, for the price, like, this is unbeatable. This is such a good foundation brush. I hope you can see it on the application. There are no streaks. You can kind of, like, buff. You can kind of, like, swipe in short strokes. It works so well and even on the concealer like under the eyes and around you know the whole area of my face where I put concealer it works so well I'm very happy with this brush next product I have is actually an eyeshadow palette and it's it's not like a regular eyeshadow palette it's like half cream and half powder so this is the I think it's a Vicon or Vicon I'm not sure I'm gonna call it Vicon <laughs> so the Vicon Cosmetics Sensation palette this is a brand I discovered through their little boutiques uh, when I was in Italy last month and I fell in love. Like they were on this beautiful shopping street next to Kiko and for once I was more impressed by someone else than Kiko. So I really just went in. I bought so much stuff from them. I'm actually gonna make like a whole video on their things. But this palette really just spoke to me. It was there like a seasonal collection in the store. And I started swatching it and I was like, oh wow. Like I was thoroughly impressed. <laughs> and the lady who was like a sales assistant, she came up to me and she was like, she was very nice. And she started explaining that like it's some kind of new formula that they have, that the shimmers are all cream, very long lasting. And the couple powders we have, I think, yeah, we have like four powder shadows are also like very good, very blendable, pigmented, and that it's a very good palette. And I took her word. It wasn't the cheapest palette ever. But I was so impressed by those goddamn shimmers that I had to get it. Like, I was in love. Look at that. It's like, it's so, they're so reflective. It's insane. You'll see it on the swatches, I hope. But in person, these look incredible. The powder formula is very nice. It's, it's very like a lightweight. I don't know how to describe it, but I feel like you pick up so little on the brush and it works so well. They blend really well. They are quite pigmented. I would say like a medium to high pigmentation. So you can kind of work them, but it's not like super insane, like you tap once on your eye and you have to blend it out for hours. It's like a good blendability in my opinion. And the shimmers are just insane, but they are very hard to apply with brushes because they are the creamy formula. So I would definitely recommend going in with a finger, of course. But these are 
amazing. Like you swatch them on your hand and you have troubles removing them. So I was just very impressed, even by the wear time, they wear so well. I wouldn't expect it from a cream eyeshadow, to be quite honest. I would expect them to crease like crazy. I would say that like the time it takes them to crease in like hot weather or humidity or like after I don't know what, 12 hours, is the same as with my powders. So I don't necessarily think the cream formula is any kind of handicap. I think it's beautiful and it's perfect and I love it so much. Next thing we have is a bit like randomish, but maybe not. If, if you know me, you know. I like my smoky liner and I just kind of, not that I stopped doing like cat eye, but yeah, I almost did. <laughs> like I don't really do normal eyeliner all that often now. I just take my powder eyeliner or some kind of dark eyeshadow and I just kind of smudge it and call it a day. And I've been using my NYX cake liner for like a thousand years. That thing is so old and I'm not getting rid of it because they don't make it anymore. But this month, I saw the new Essence Pumpkins Pretty Please, it's like a Halloween limited edition collection. I saw this, which is called Creamy Shadow Eyeliner, which sounds exactly like what I might like. So this packaging is kind of like known in their products. You have like a brush on one side, which I don't really like because it gets like really like crunchy and disgusting super fast. And on the other side, you screw it off and you have the liner, which is really good. It's super handy. It's I feel like it could be a little bit smaller, like this is pretty big packaging for what it is. This is just like a tube with air. But I really like the formula. It is exactly what it says. It's it's like a cream that kind of dries down into powder. Not even dries down. It's it's a cream that like acts like a powder. It's very hard to explain. Maybe you're going to see it in the clip, maybe not, I don't know, but it's definitely a very unique formula. And it's super long lasting. I really like it. It doesn't really smudge on you at all from what I saw. And it's super hard to take off. So yeah, it's long wearing. It's pretty long wearing. And what I also like is that it gives you like a smoky, you know, finish. And like the smoky look, which is something that I've been going after a lot. And uh, last but not least, we got Tarte again. We got Tarte. I told you I'm gonna be talking about Tarte for a minute. And this is their Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. This is, this is a thing, okay? So when I was in Spain this summer, I spent some of my time looking for this very product in this very shade, which is white peach. No fucking way. It was sold out everywhere, like through the whole Spain, through the whole chunk of Spain that I visited, which is very infuriating. <laughs> then we came back to Czech Republic and guess who launched? <laughs> and it was everywhere because nobody knew it's that good. But this is like such a unique cool thing I'm wearing it right now, of course, as the rest of the stuff. This is a lip plumping, it's almost like a stick gloss. So it comes in a stick, you kind of like click it up. And it's like this beautiful, quite pigmented, super shiny, like glossy, balmy lip plumper. It doesn't sting too bad, it is quite subtle. It's more like this like minty tingle, if anything else. So comfortable, so beautiful. It's not sticky, it's not transferring too much, it's not too annoying to wear basically, which I have kind of sometimes problems with different lip plumpers, that they're just such a fuss to wear. I was just very happy to see that there's one lip plumper that's not going to irritate me a lot, because I do have allergic reactions to some of them, but this one's fine, and I actually really like it. The color is beautiful, it's like your everyday kind of peachy nude thing, something that I would wear on top of anything, it's all good. You can either swipe it or just sometimes dab it on. It's really high shine. That's what I like the most about it, I think. It's super shiny. The color is beautiful. It's just enough pigmented. And it really plumps my lips. Like, I feel like I can see a difference. If anything, it's the optical illusion plus some of that, like, slight mental-ish irritation. But beautiful. Incredible. And yes, this was your monthly rundown of favorites from your truly Draco Malfoy. So that is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe you got some cool tips. Thank you very much for watching. Consider subscribing. And if you want to see more videos where I talk about my favorites, you can check out the playlist. See ya!